Assalamu alaikum dearest respected brothers and sisters, dearest viewers wherever you may be. From Adam alayhi salam to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his family, an enthralling month ahead of us as we delve into the lives of the Prophets mentioned in the Quran. What lessons can we take from their lives and how do we apply those lessons into our lives? Who was Prophet Adam? Who was Prophet Ibrahim? Ishaq, Yaqub. And lastly, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Now, before I introduce our dearest esteemed guest, I'd like to remind the viewers that if you do want to call in to us to say the question, you can call in on 0203 515 0199 or alternatively, text in your questions to the number down below. Without further ado, Sayyidna, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullah. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, I'm buzzing. I'm very well. Thank Alhamdulillah, you. Alhamdulillah, you seem very excited. First of all, I am. All, I am. I wonder why. Two Ramadan, two congratulations are in order. Firstly, congratulations on Ramadan, and secondly, I see that Liverpool shirt down there. You scouts did your thing yesterday. How yeah, was it? You, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna be taking this, this uh, T-shirt off very soon. Yeah. Uh, to be wearing. You know, the customary white shirt that would go with this black suit. But I just had to wear, it with wear the Liverpool shirt. I think it was most amazing performance. Um, you, know, I, we, you know, we went to the game yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're thinking, you know, I've seen some great nights at Anfield. Um, and I'm going to keep talking until this rubs into all the Manx out there who find it <laughs> difficult to listen to this. But, you know, the Manx have big games against yeah, Huddersfield yeah. and Cardiff, you know. Mm -hmm. So really huge games compared to us with Barcelona and, and whoever we're going to play. Uh, but it was just a, a wonderful experience. Uh, Liverpool were unbelievable. Um, to be Messi's Barcelona, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I don't care about no uh, white suits shirts anymore you know the Liverpool yeah. t-shirt has to come out today <laughs> I will get changed very soon however this was just testimony to the outstanding uh, performance of Jurgen Klopp um, and his boys they were unbelievable shout out to Fabinho who I thought was <laughs> out of this world getting a yellow card after 10 minutes and still producing one of the best performances anyone has ever produced against the likes of Messi um, and the other rejects you who were playing Champions alongside League Messi. Is yours? Well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping that uh, if we can't get the Premiership, um, you know, when Vincent Company scores yeah. from 30 yards, maybe not your year, yeah. but um, hopefully the Champions League. So, you know, it's the holy month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. This yes, is, is a great month. <laughs> Thank you. We're going we're gonna to have uh, some wonderful nights coming up, and I'm really looking forward to this introductory first night before we delve into the lives of the prophets. Now let's kick this off, as you said, this introductory first night. Now, just to get a bit of a background of, uh, because there are many topics you could have chosen to discuss mm. in these 30 nights. So what made you choose this specific topic? Yeah, you know, uh, people write into me all the time asking me, you know, what's your series for the holy month of Ramadan? And I think you as well, had said to me how much the Imam Ali alayhi salam series affected you yeah. um, about six years ago and yeah, others yeah. were affected by the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him his family biography and others by the Quran series and others um, you know by the Imam Mahdi ajallallahu farajahu sharif series but I just felt that there were the lives of the Prophets peace be upon them in the Quran has not really been discussed mm within our communities with the depth that it deserves. There are many people out there, if you ask them about the likes of the Kifl or you ask them about Idris or Hud or Salih, you find that sadly there is a lack of knowledge on their lives. Even though Ad and Thamud and all these nations are mentioned alongside those prophets on numerous occasions. So I felt on the first level that 
there was a need for us to build our relationship with these personalities who form part of a central pillar of the religion of Islam, that being Nubu. Yeah. As in, you know, when, when we look at the Usul al-Din of all the schools of the religion of Islam, um, after monotheism, there is this belief in prophethood. Mm -hmm. um, and there is this belief placed alongside the belief in the Quran and the angels and the day of judgment. Now, to believe in these prophets of God, there is no way that I can understand the Lord or the secrets of the cosmos or the secrets of the universe without studying the lives of these prophets of God. So it's a shame when you ask Muslims in the world today um, about the prophets mentioned in the Quran and you'll find that there are many Muslims out there who don't know much about um, you know, the likes, um, as I said, of, um, of Idris and of Hud and of yeah, Salih. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. likewise, there are names which we mention often in our communities, but you find that these names, people are still uncertain about certain aspects of their life. As in tomorrow we begin with Nabi Adam alayhi salam and every single place I've ever lectured where God has blessed me to be able to lecture, people have always asked me, did Adam commit a sin? Yeah. Wherever I've gone in the world, people have asked me about the flood of Noah. Mm -hmm. Was it local? Was it global? Why would God cause a flood to That's happen? What was happening at the time with Nabi Nuh alayhi salam? So you've got... Uh, this issue as well with Nabi Nuh. Then you've got others who ask questions related to David and Solomon, for example. David and Solomon, their story very much is important in relation to the Middle East today. Mm -hmm. You know, what is, the, what is the Temple Mount? What is this issue related, for example, to um, magic, Harut, Marut, the angels, Babylon? Mm -hmm. You know, so there are these wonderful stories of prophets in the Holy Quran which I don't think we've given the attention that they deserve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just going to include any story in the Holy Quran. He's going to include parts of a story which are going to be beneficial for all of us. Mm -hmm. And so I, I sincerely wanted us to understand Nubuwa generally. Okay. The philosophy behind Nubuwa, the philosophy behind prophethood, the philosophy behind um, you know, the Risala that came with different prophets. Mm -hmm but also at the same time understand the lives of these individual prophets. Yeah. What do they go through in their lives? I'm living, for example, in London in 2019. Some of the viewers are living in the States and you know, in, in the Indo-Pak subcontinent, the Middle East, in Australasia, in Europe, what, even in South America. What can they say that, you know what, that particular prophet, peace be upon his family, I can relate to. With the Imams, alayhim salam the imams, their biographies, we can all relate to one of the imams. Mm -hmm. True? Yeah. So you'll have some people who say, I can relate to the, 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 the patience of Amir al muminin or the bravery of Imam al Hussein, or the diplomacy of Imam al Hassan, or the ilm of Imam al Sadiq. But I don't see that same relationship sometimes with prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though, you know, Nubuwa is the central tenant within Shia belief. I still find that there are many people out there who may even be experts on Islam, but when it comes to the lives of the prophets, peace be upon them, there isn't much knowledge there. Mm. Even though there was a, you know, some of the greatest ulama across the schools um, in the religion of Islam used to pride themselves on writing works known as uh, Qasas al-Anbiya. You know, mm. Qasas al-Anbiya, these were works which if you look at the likes of, for example, um, you know, Qutb al-Din al-Rawandi or um, the likes of Ibn Kuthair, they used to pride themselves on talking of the stories of the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Majlisi, Bukhari, Al-Kafi, you know, different works exist which sought to talk about um, the lives of Prophets from renowned authors. Like I mentioned, Ibn Kuthair, like I mentioned, Tha'labi as an example. So, the first reason is understanding Nubuwa. The yeah. second reason, there's over... Three and a half billion people in the world who believe in these prophets. Yeah. We're not the only ones who believe in, for example, um, Nabi Adam or Nabi Nuh's flood or Abraham's sacrifice or Moses and Pharaoh mm -hmm. or David and Solomon or the story of, you know, Sheba. We're not the only ones. The Jewish community, yeah. a huge community in London. The Christian community, a huge community in London. Jewish community, a huge community, for example, in the States. 
the Christian community, a huge community worldwide. Mm -hmm. I want us to seek to delve in this holy month to look at what are the similarities and differences, to compare and to contrast. Yeah. The Adam of the Bible, the Adam of the Quran, David and Solomon in the scriptures of the Jewish community and in the Quran, mm -hmm. Christ in Christianity, Christ in the Quran. Yeah, yeah. Looking at Noah and his relationship with his, for example, um, family in the Bible, and Noah and his relationship with his family in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Looking at Lot, Prophet Lot, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah, and how that affects the Jewish and the Christian community today in their understanding of same gender relations. You see, we need the scriptural reasoning alongside the interfaith dialogue. The interfaith dialogue is great, sitting, but not sitting and opening the scriptures to seek to understand what we all believe mm -hmm. is something which I feel is a hindrance to the growth of peace and prosperity in the lands within which we live. Which brings me to my third point. There is something which has been escalating now for more than 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And that is this myth which is permeating in our societies which the young grow up listening to and that is Islam versus the West mm -hmm. and the West versus Islam. Yep. Many youngsters in the world today are growing up listening to this that Islam and the West are diametrically opposed to each other that there is a major problem between the two Never shall they meet. There are no similarities. And sometimes when you look at certain people in, who represent Islam, I don't blame some of the Western mind for thinking this. Yeah. However, I believe that when we're looking at the lives of the prophets of God, who many non-Muslims, many non-Muslims don't know that we believe in Adam and Noah and Abraham and Moses. Yeah, yeah. They think it's Muhammad is some random guy from Arabia who these guys <laughs> worship. And I do believe that if we're going to move to a world where this whole, you know, this dichotomy between Islam and the West, mm. this clash of civilizations, it's not a clash of civilizations. On the contrary, the there point. are billions in the world who admire these names and so do we. So we need to remove this idea that Islam and the West, their morality is... No, the morality is a morality that goes back to Noah. Mm. Looks at the patience of Ayyub. Yeah. Looks at the knowledge of Idris. Wants to understand the search for the mystical transcendent world as well as the material world of the likes of Moses and his story with Khidr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shame that the world we live in today has become a world of Islam versus the West. Now we need to find a solution to that. Because otherwise now what you have in the world is people who are like, listen, Islam is the reason for our backwardness. Islam is the reason for, uh, you know, humanity's lack of progress. And Muslims are terrorists. Muslims are fundamentalists. No, no, hold on a minute. There's a need for us to reassess those figures who play a pivotal role and can continue to play a pivotal role. There are many Christians, Jews and Muslims out there who admire Prophet Ibrahim What can we learn from the sacrifice of Abraham, from the closeness to God of Abraham, yeah. from the softness and the justice of Abraham, the generosity of Abraham? Why was he called the Khalil? Yeah, yeah. So this clash that exists, which some would say the likes of Huntington predicted that, you know, there is a clash between Islam and the West, one of the ways to alleviate this is by having a topic which billions can relate to. What I want is that when viewers hear these discussions, I want the viewers to be able to say that, here, my non-Muslim friend, this is night two on Nabi Adam tomorrow. Yep. Did you know about Sheath? Do you know about Noah? Have you heard of Idris? Let me tell you about Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, David, yeah. Solomon, Job, Zachariah, Jesus, Mary, Moses. 
And then hopefully our kids can grow up in an environment mm. where these sickening wars, yeah. hatred, sectarian escalation, fundamentalism is removed when we're able to respect each other's heritage. Yep. Well, see, that's all beneficial for, you know, as you mentioned, 3.5 billion uh, people believe in those profits. But as we know, the world population is nearly, nearly at 8 billion. Now, these things are beneficial for those who believe. But how about the atheists? How about the Hindus who don't believe in the prophets of Allah? Who have never actually come across the prophets of Allah? How is that beneficial for well, them? Well, a person doesn't have to be a Muslim or Christian or Jewish for them to A, seek knowledge... So if you have an atheist friend who wants to watch this program, doesn't have to believe in Abraham as a man of God or Noah as a man of God or David or Solomon as men of God. They can look at them for the morality they espoused. Mm -hmm. They can look at them for certain trials and tribulations they can relate to. I've got many atheists, colleagues out there who will tell you that we may not necessarily believe in the God of so-and-so, a mystic, but we admire their words and we'll have a coffee table mm. book which will be with their quotes. There are people out there who don't believe in God but may revere, for example, somebody like Buddha and his words. So therefore, just saying that somebody is an atheist, how would the lives of the prophets benefit them? We need to remember that all of us at the end of the day in our basic humanity are seeking to understand the lives of people who've influenced the world. You may call him Nebi Ayyub. You may call him uh, Nebi Musa. You know, you may call them Job or Moses. Mm. If I was to remove the title of Nebi from them, prophet from them, are there lessons from their life that any human can learn? Yeah. Definitely. There are human beings out there who are facing moments where they're, 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 you know, they're, they're suffering, they have trials. They can relate to Nebi Ayyub mm -hmm. You mentioned, for example, the Hindus. Yeah. And you said, well, how would something like this benefit the Hindus? I think in our discussions, you're going to realize Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Muslims, Christians, Jews, a lot of them have more prophets in common than you imagine. Whether I call that particular person a prophet or whether they call him a prophet or whether they have deified somebody, I think there's a basic understanding that there were certain great humans on this earth whose awareness of the material and the unseen mm. and their consciousness of the mystical realm mm. was far above those who surrounded them. Yeah. I've met Hindus and I met Sikhs who may not believe in my prophet but there's still wonderful spiritual lessons you can gain from them. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, I, I used to get freaked out sometimes when I'd walk, for example, in central London and, and a, a Sikh man comes up to me and he's like to me, listen, brother, there's good days ahead for you. And I'm like, really? He's like, uh, I'll tell you your date of birth. He tells me my date of birth. <laughs> he tells me everything about me. What's my favorite color? <laughs> now that person has a certain mystical intuition. Yeah. It's our arrogance that has stopped us from studying the works of the greats of the Sikh world mm -hmm. or the Hindu world or the Buddhist world, the heritage of the great Sikhs and Buddhists. There are men of those paths. I would even say there are, you know, women of those paths as well who were great spiritual figures, oh. who were above the mundane. Mm. So I think this series can help bring a closeness in those lovers of the spiritual world. Mm. Now, say, you know, we believe that from the beginning of time until the end, there will always be a guide. Now, as we know, the earth exi has existed for thousands and thousands of years. According to the Islamic view, how many prophets were sent down as a guidance since the beginning of uh, human creation until now? There's this figure that's normally given and can be seen in works such as Bihar al-Anwar of Al-Majlisi and Man la yahdarahu al-Faqih of Saduq of 124,000. Okay. Now this is not restricted by the Qur'an by the way. We have certain traditions 
from one of the most important sources in understanding the lives of these prophets this month, and that is the family of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There's nobody who can provide you with knowledge of the world of the prophets like Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq especially. Now, all the Imams السلام, will provide us with great knowledge. Yeah. But Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq living in the earliest part of the second century, um, they, they, they were the ones who were able to elaborate for us to understand the covenants that had taken place before the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. The lives of Noah, the lives of Ayyub, the lives of Idris, the lives of Samuel, the lives and so on. Mm -hmm. So I would say 124,000 is the figure that's normally um, mentioned as a guidance, both in the Shia school and in other schools in Islam. Yeah. Now, 124,000 as per, as per said hadith, how many of those are actually mentioned in the Quran? Well, we're looking at in the Quran 2526. Listen, if, it, if there was more than 2526, we're struggling this holy month of Ramadan. <laughs> yeah. Because can you imagine, we've got 124,000 mentioned in the Quran, then by the time, you know, by, by the time we would finish all of them, even uh, the angel that blows the trumpet for the Day of Judgment will be like, listen guys, you know what, I think now it's time. Because, you know, 124,000, but... 25, 26 are mentioned in the Holy Quran. And, mm. and during these nights, I will explain why there's a difference about whether it's 25 or 26. Um, and so those prophets, you'll find the first of them is Adam, alayhi mm -hmm. And the last of them is the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. Yeah. But you know, but 25 or 26, let's say 26, let's go for argument, say 26. To 124,000, it's pretty a big, it's a pretty big gap. Yeah. You know, why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include some others in the Qur'an? Now, there have been a number of reasons uh, posited why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mention all of them. And I think one of the main reasons is that the Qur'an is not a history book. Okay. Yeah, some might say, for example, you look at other religious scriptures that exist out there. They're, they're books which give you a, a timeline of the development of human societies, human communities, and the relationship between the messengers of God with those particular nations. The Qur'an is not a book of history. Um, the Qur'an seeks to provide us with certain, um, uh, certain epochs, certain you know, kernels, certain moments in the development of humanity with certain figures. Mm. Um, now that doesn't mean that in the world of hadith we don't have certain prophets which are mentioned. Mm. Yeah? But in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided that these prophets especially the arch prophets, these prophets and what preceded them and what follows them deserves the most attention. That doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mention the likes of, for example, Luqman and Khidr where there's a debate or the Qarnayn, whether there's a debate as to uh, whether they are prophets of God or not. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, it seems that these are the main figures for the Quran. Mm -hmm. Preceding the Quran, we have the Torah. Preceding the Quran, we have the Injil. We have the Zabur as well. There's a possibility that there are other prophets which are mentioned, as we can see in those books until today. But what's the point? What's the point of sending prophets? You know, what's the what's the whole philosophy behind a prophet being sent down from God? Uh, as in, aren't we humans able to think for ourselves? Aren't we able to find our own way to God? I think there's no doubt that we can. Think for ourselves, you know um, Tomorrow in the story of Adam, we'll see what happens when He is offered intellect decency and devotion mm -hmm. and which one he takes the intellect plays a major role in our lives but on the first level when I recognize that God exists It would be unjust of that Lord not to provide me with a guide to help my growth and my progress yeah. in knowing my Lord. You know, you can't, uh, if I was to talk to my Lord as Iqbal done in his famous shakwa, I would say, my Lord, how could you leave me on this earth telling me to worship you, but you didn't provide me with anyone as a guide. The internal proof of God is my intellect. What ensures that my intellect matches my intrinsic nature, my fitrah, is the presence of a prophetic figure on the earth. 
In Islamic theology, they talk of qa'idat al-lutf. Lutf meaning grace. And God's grace is that he sent us mm -hmm. wonderful personalities yeah. who are able to provide us with an understanding of how to balance hope and fear. Mm -hmm. With a reminder of God's bounties when we sometimes forget. And allowing our intrinsic nature to always be in a state of equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Imam Ali alayhi salam answers this. He says, Amir al muminin says wonderfully, the prophets were sent to allow us to be at one with our intrinsic nature and to remind us and ensure that we don't forget Allah's bounties. Yep. I recognize myself as a human being, I'm imperfect. There are many areas I'm limited. I look at someone above me, I find that they are more perfect, but still with limitations. There's some above them, more perfect, but with still limit limitations. There's some above them who are still searching for godly knowledge. Then there are those personalities who when they walked on the earth, they were inspired with a God-given knowledge. Mm -hmm. As if they were part of a pre-eternal covenant. Mm -hmm. And so, on the one hand, you've got Qa'idat al-Lutf in Islamic theology. In mysticism, there is this recognition there's always a perfect man on the earth yeah. who ensures that the earth doesn't swallow its inhabitants or for other words, for other words which one can use, that there is a purpose for our existence. Mm -hmm. That perfect man, the insan al-kamil, is somebody who is discussed in all schools in Islam. Mm -hmm. It's Adam at one point. It's excelled maybe by Noah. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. Not only are they people who show me how to get closer to the Lord, mm -hmm. but they are also those who allow me to see what is the path towards felicity rather than transgression. I as a human can either enjoy a path of transgression yeah. or I enjoy a path where it's been mapped out by their special characters. Yeah. Even there are non-Muslims out there who admire the characteristics of these personalities. So when someone asks me, why do I need a prophet? Yeah, my intellect has helped me. But it's moments when I see their behaviors, their principles, and their guidance that I recognize which choice to make in a certain difficult situation. Yeah. Now, before we go to the break, just quickly, um, sometimes there are there's a reference to Nabi, sometimes there's a reference to Rasul. Now, how do we distinguish between the two? You know, what's the difference? Yeah, I mean, theologians have, have sought to ask, answer this question, what, Nabi, Rasul. One thing we could tell from the word, you know, if you're breaking the word Nabi, you could break it into two. One is referring to somebody in a very important position. Mm -hmm. Another is a piece of great news. So, a Nabi is somebody of important position who brings great news. Yeah. A Rasul is a messenger, mm -hmm. normally seen as unique because they have a particular risala, mm -hmm. a particular message which they are giving their people. Others have commented on what type of methods God uses to communicate to a Nabi or Rasul? Is it in dreams only? Mm. Some will have dreams as well as the sight of the angel Gabriel. There are theological debates about this. But mm. suffice for us is that every uh, that there is an opinion that uh, every Rasul is a Nabi, but not every Nabi is a Rasul. Thank you very much, Sayyid, and thank you to the dearest viewers watching at home. Uh, I'd like I'll to... get changed now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sayyid will get changed. He will get rid of his uh, Liverpool shirt. I am a gooner, so I don't like the view of that. But uh, I'd like to remind the viewers that if you do want to call in, ask to say the question, you can call in on 0203 515 0199 or what's up in your questions down below. Please stay tuned for the second part after this short break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. <laughs>
Assalamu alaikum, thank you for joining us again, wherever you may be, worldwide, um, as we discuss the lives of the Prophet in the Quran and the lessons we can take from their lives. This episode is just an introductory episode, just for the viewers joining us now. Uh, and inshallah, we will discuss Prophet Adam alayhi salam tomorrow. Um, but back to our discussion with uh, Dr. Sayyid Amman Nakhshawani, since I'm sure you can notice a change with him when, uh, as he appears on your screen. He's gotten rid of that Liverpool shirt and is dressed quite smartly. Looking I wish like, I could go back to the Liverpool shirt, but... Uh, looking like you're about to get married. I have to, uh, I have to come into this formal way, otherwise the producers will not be too happy with me. <laughs> Considering the producers at the back, are, none of them are Liverpool fans. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that so, creates a problem for you. Sadly. Sadly. You look like you're about to get married. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> now, um, Sayyidina, we hear about the prophets of Allah. Some of them, we, we discussed Nabi and Rasul. Now, we hear the word Ulil Azm. Now, are they the same rank? Are they different ranks in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you could shed light on that. Yeah, we, we'll come to the Ulil Azm prophets when we start with Nabi Nuh alayhi salam. Uh, and again, there are different opinions as to uh, these prophets. Let's make something very clear. The Quran, there is a verse that makes clear, not all prophets of Allah are at the same level. Mm -hmm. Just in case there are people out there who think that every prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on the same level as the other. No. When the Quran talks of a particular tafdeel that exists, a particular exalted position that some favor over others that some have over others um, in surah 2 verse 253 in surah al-baqarah there are messengers we have exalted some above the others some we have raised them in ranks and clearly if you're looking at the traditions there is a difference between the number of nba mentioned and the number of rusul mentioned mm -hmm. Um, sometimes you hear that there's 124,000 prophets, yeah. 313 messengers. Okay. Ah. So, as we said, that the Rusul are, for example, seen um, as being NBA as well as Rusul, whereas not every Nabi is a Rasul. So, when we're now looking at the Rusul, these are the ones who have come, according to some opinions, to the whole of mankind and the whole of the jinn. There are NBA who have come just for their local area. Mm. Quran sometimes refers to some prophets where it says, um, and remember their brother who mm. came to them. He may have come just to that local area. That Rasul has come and the Ulil Azim, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, they have come where? They have come to the whole of mankind and the whole of the world of the jinn. Mm. Because the Quran says, we did not create the jinn or the humans except to worship me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So the jinn believe in prophets, the humans believe in prophets. Mm. The jinn have had <coughs> rusul because <laughs> when Surah Al-Jinn was revealed, mm. the jinn had interestingly mentioned that they had heard the message before this one of Prophet Moses salam. Okay. <coughs> so that goes to show us that Prophet Moses salam mm. is seen as being one of the Ulil Azim who has come for the human, has come for the jinn. jinn. Yep. has come for the East and has come for the people of the West. Unlike those NBA who may have come, for example, to a local mm -hmm. area or a local vicinity. Mm -hmm. And those Ulil Azim may have come with a Injil, with a Torah, with a... We're going to come, inshallah, in a couple of nights to the uh, life of Nabi Nuh alayhi salam. Yeah. And we're going to look at the Nawaid Lords. And when you're looking at the Noahide laws, you're going to find that this is the beginning of these scriptures. You're later going to have the Suhuf of Ibrahim, mm. the Torah of Moses, yep. the Injil of 
Jesus yeah. and the Quran of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So what we have is that the Ulul Azim, part of the eye of the Quran which mentions that we have given excellence for some above others. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who have come to the whole of mankind, the whole of the jinn, the east and the west. And they have come with a particular message which continues the previous message for different reasons. It's interesting that you mentioned the 313 Rusul, 313 Rusul. Now, if they came down with messages and they were uh, Rasulullah, uh, you mentioned the Ulul Azim are the ones bringing down the books. Did they follow the books until the uh, next Ulul Azim prophet came? Or was it that they came down with a different book themselves? Well, if we're looking at, there are many different nations in the world, many different countries. You know, it's, it's a shame that we only know about the Middle East. You know, we yeah. always know about which prophet went to Iraq or who went to Jerusalem, you know, or who went, for example, to, uh, let's say, the Hijaz area. It seems that there are Rusul who have gone far and wide. Um, and whether they actually have a suhuf or they have a, a revealed text or they have a set of commandments, mm. there is a difference of opinion about. But certainly you'll find that there are many prophets out there who sadly people have not dissected their lives. Mm. Maybe the lack of information sometimes is also critical. Listen, I'll tell you something, and I say this to the viewers, extremely difficult process in, in preparing these discussions is finding information. Sometimes information is very scarce yeah. about certain nations, about certain areas. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, clearly when we're saying there's 124,000 NBR, there's 313 Rusul, mm. it clearly means that there was a continuation of testaments, covenants, yeah. tablets, relics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when we come to Nabi Adam السلام, and when we go towards Nabi Nuh, there is a continuation of relics which are passed from one prophet towards another. Yeah, because yeah. somewhere... Because the tabut comes later on. Exactly. In the story of... Um, if you look at the story of Nabi Musa alayhi salam, Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, and with David as well, Prophet Dawood, there's this, there's this tablet that continues. Mm -hmm. One may argue if you look at the red Jafar and the white Jafar and the discussions concerning that, uh, which comes later in Imamology, mm -hmm. there is a continuation of holding on to the hair of so-and-so, the stone of so-and-so, the shield of so-and-so. Mm -hmm. What was Dhul Fiqar before? The yeah. sword of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Did it belong to previous nations? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> there are different relics, there's different forms of knowledge, there's different revelations, there's different tablets which are passed from one community to another. Because you look at somewhere like Japan, uh, the Japanese, the Greek, uh, the Chinese even, the Indians, they have some of the oldest civilizations in the world. So one would question whether they had prophets sent down to them or not. I think they did. You think they and did? And I think the Quran <laughs> makes it clear that they did. Okay. On the first level, the Qarnain, some called him Alexander the Great, some called him Cyrus, different opinions. Mm -hmm. But you read his story in Surah 18 of the Holy Quran, he's, he's traveling wide, far, he's meeting different nations. I think there's a clear hint, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if you were to believe that tradition attributed to the Prophet, you know, mm -hmm. uh, seek knowledge, even if you have to go as far as China, you know, it, 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 there's an indication there. Okay, yeah. You know, you mentioned interestingly, Japan. I would say there are countries in the world today which are amongst the most, you know, which are ancient states founded years before some of these big nations which are founded only a couple hundred years ago. You're looking at places like San Marino, places like Japan, places like uh, India, uh, Armenia, mm -hmm. you know, Iraq, where we come to a very important point when we're going to look at the graves of Nabi Adam and Nabi Nuh in the next couple of days. Uh, and so what you have is that there are prophets, as the Quran mentions, Surah 35, verse 24, there wasn't an area without us sending a warner. Mm -hmm. Every area had a warner. Otherwise, that area could turn around and say, hold on, God, you want me to come towards your path, but where was, where was your guide? That's very, that's Why did you send point. everybody to Iraq? What is it? Is it something nice about Iraqi food? <laughs> you know, you're sending everyone to Iraq, is it because yeah. the food's great? Why are you sending everyone to Mecca and Medina? Were there prophets in Japan? Mm -hmm. Were there prophets in India? Were there prophets in Greece? Were there prophets in Armenia? Were there prophets in San Marino? I think there were prophets in all these areas. Okay. Bro, 124,000 <laughs> is no joke. No, definitely not. 124,000 is a huge number. Mm -hmm. 
And there's no doubt that, what's the central message of these prophets? Central message of belief in the oneness of God, monotheism and so on. And so they've gone to nations, you know, of different areas. Now, I'm not going to deny that some of these prophets may have been deified. Some of them may have been made to become God with a statue. Okay, yeah, yeah. That yeah. doesn't deny that God, God upon himself, he would have ensured that every single area, as the Quran mentions, that there wasn't an area, but that we sent a warner. For every nation, there is a warner and there are guides. Okay. There are NBA, Rusul, Ausriya. Yes? Yep. Uh, so, so I think those countries that you mentioned, you'll find that some of their greatest figures mm -hmm. are prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yep. There are prophets like Daniel. You know, I, I've, got to, I've got to look after the name Daniel because I've attacked it a couple of times in our communities and I've got good friends called Daniel and they told me, say, Inna, why did you attack the name Daniel? So I'm going to say good things about Daniel. But the name Daniel is the name of a prophet. A prophet who told us about the coming of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family. But it's not in the Quran. Yeah. Yes, in the next 20 odd nights, we're going to be looking at the lives of the prophets mentioned in the Quran. Mm. But there are Buddha, Krishna, Aristotle and others. These are prophets who may not be mentioned in the Quran. Yeah. But can anyone deny that they're one of the 124,000? Yeah. See, just, just before you mentioned that, in my head, those four were historical personalities. Yeah. Just literally just historical personalities that were revered by, that are revered by cultures and different religions other than mine. I thought that, you know, they have nothing to do with me and my religion, but it sounds like they do. <laughs> they certainly do, yeah. Now, you mentioned Prophet Daniel alayhi salam, and you mentioned um, other prophets that are not mentioned in the Quran. Are those prophets mentioned in other sources? Where do we find those sources? <coughs> I, I still think the, the Torah and the Injil or the Old Testament, the New Testament, I still think these are all valuable sources for us. Mm. Um, and providing us with, I, I, the Old Testament does go into a lot of intricacies which the Quran's not interested in. Mm -hmm. The Quran may not be interested in it for a number of reasons. Either it's speaking to a Jewish community in Medina who already know all of this. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to say that this person's married to that person and there was eight people there and there are nine people there and there was this guy's uncle and so on. So I, I think that what you're finding is that those, those, Prophets and their families mentioned in the in the Bible, mentioned in the Jewish scriptures, possibly mentioned in Hindu Sikh scriptures. I definitely wouldn't deny that those personalities. When when you're hearing names, I'm not going to say prophets, but there are certain people in history who had a mystical edge to them. They don't have to be prophets, but like you know, you look at the likes of Guru Nanak. You study Sikhism. Has Sikhism has a has a lot of fine spirituality which can be taken you know, from Islam, mm -hmm. um, and they go hand in hand with one another. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that the sources of other religions are helpful in providing us with indications of great personalities mm -hmm. uh, who may have been those prophets as well. Now, let's not say that also in our books, such as Al-Kafi, such as the Bihar, there are mentions of personalities mm -hmm. who um, may not be mentioned directly in the Quran. You know, you have, for example, we're going to come to Nabi Sheeth, Mm -hmm. And, you know, Nabi Sheeth has a grave, some say in, in Lebanon and some say in Mosul and other places. This is a personality whose name is not directly mentioned in the Quran. There's mm -hmm. no I am mentioning Sheeth, but can still be counted as a source for our knowledge. Okay. Sayyidna, just a quick question from uh, one of our dear viewers. Uh, Zahra from Scotland says, good evening. I have a question. Did the prophets have financial aspirations? Thank you. Well, what you have is that uh, we're going to see, inshallah, in the show on Nabi Nuh, alayhi salam, mm. is he begins this trend of prophets who say that, um, you know, I don't ask for any recompense. My recompense is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And the only prophet, peace be upon him and his family, the holy prophet Muhammad is the one who said that um, uh, I don't ask from you anything except love for my Family. Otherwise, the rest say our edges with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone asks why? Because it's a sign of their intellectual honesty that I have not come here to deliver this message on the basis of a bribe that you're going to give me or money you're going to give me. Rather, I have come here with a basic message. And that is to bring all of us closer to our path of God mm -hmm. consciousness. Yep. 
Yeah. So um, in terms of them doing this, had, had it been, and they always tell their people, look, have we asked for a penny from you guys for you to dow us? We could have easily did that. And we'll see with the people of Nuh that many mocked him because his followers were poor. Okay. Yeah. Now, back to our discussion. You know, the latest story we see with uh, the prophets of Allah is goes back to 1,400 years to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family. The earliest, some tens of thousands of years with Prophet Adam, alayhi salam. You know, what sources should we use and how do you verify uh, sources that we will use? It's, it's, it's a huge challenge to be able to rewrite or reevaluate the biographies of the prophets in the Holy Quran. Mm. You know, it's ta it takes a while to come and do this. And, you know, if I, there, are, there are five, six books in my head, as I mentioned earlier, which are purely Qasas al Anbiya. Mm. You know, the works of Ibn Kuthir, the works of Al Tha'labi, the works of Qutb al Rawandi, the works of Al Majlisi. Um, these, these are pure. Uh, pure, you know, pieces of literature looking at the Bible of the Prophets, but then you see major differences in the way they look at Prophets. Mm. Some are very happy to ascribe fallibility and sin mm -hmm. to those Prophets. Moses punching the angel of death, a stone running away with yeah. his clothes, um, <coughs> you know, mm. David committing adultery, um, Abraham worshipping idols, and so but we're all Muslims. Yeah. We all believe in the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How then can one group of Muslims be ready to happily say that amongst the reasons Abraham cannot do intercession or cannot intercede on the day of judgment is because he committed a sin mm -hmm. or that Adam sinned or that Moses killed someone sinned or that you know, Moses punches the angel of death and then you come to another group of Muslims who believe in the infallibility of prophets. Clearly there's a difference, which is a challenge when we look at the sources. And that's why I always say, there is nobody who can explain to us the teachings of the prophets and the lives of the prophets and the lessons from those lives of the prophets in the Quran, like Muhammad and Al Muhammad, salawatullah wa salam alayhim, the Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as salam. Mm. Imam al-Baqir, Imam al there's a book out there if you guys want to read it, it's called Jesus. Mm. Jesus through Shia narrations or Jesus and Shia narrations by uh, Lagenhausen. It's a fantastic work and it shows you just how much knowledge the Ahl al Bayt had about the biographies of the Prophets. Mm -hmm. Now, why did we need the Ahl al Bayt? Because we have so many, when we look at the biographies of the Prophets, there's so many um, hadiths which are known as Israeliyat. Now, Israeliyat is that there was a sudden rise of, um, a sudden rise of X. Jews and Christians, Allah knows their intention, who suddenly, suddenly started to ascribe stories of prophets mm -hmm. preceding the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, and put them into the genre of Islamic uh, narrative and literature in the world of hadith. And mm -hmm. Sometimes you look at these Israeliyat, I'll give you a famous example. The Prophet went into Mi'raj and supposedly, you know, you've got this story about him... Um, you know, him going and asking about Salah. At first Salah was 50, he said, make it easier for my people. Mm. Comes down, comes yeah. down, comes down till five. You know, you've got these traditions which suddenly start coming in. Ka'b al-Ahbar, mm. amongst others, um, who start bringing Israeliyat in. Yeah. Now someone may argue that, well, sometimes in Shia literature, you may have an Israeli tradition narrated from an Imam. Firstly, not everything in Shia literature is to be taken. Mm. But secondly, there are stages where the Imams lived under tyrannical rulers where taqiyya was fundamental at that time. Mm. However, if you were to compare them with other discussions on the same area, you'll find that uh, another Imam in another period is able to dissect this topic uh, more freely. So uh, what we have is that from the Ahlul Bayt, السلام, especially I tell you somebody who's a wonderful source of understanding the prophetic mission and the lives of the Prophets, and that's Imam Ali alayhi salam, within Nahj al balagha there are mm. brilliant discussions. Yeah. Right from the outset, that creation of Adam. Mm. Tomorrow, we're going to look at Inshallah. Adam's creation. Yep. And the creation of Adam alayhi salam, you look at Imam Ali alayhi salam, talks about it right from the beginning of Nahj al balagha mm -hmm. And he always brings stories of the Prophets who came before him. Mm. 
And I think he's a wonderful source. Nahj al is a great source. Uh, Bihar Anwar, Majesty, you know, I think there's the English, which is known as Hayat al Qulub, which seeks to discuss prophetic stories. Mm -hmm. That can be used as well. I, I don't discount, and I haven't discounted, the usage of archaeology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to try and look at uh, the understanding of structures and buildings in the lives of prophets preceding the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. We might discuss that with the Ark of Noah. Mm -hmm. How did they build the Ark of Noah? How many days did it take to build the Ark of Noah? You know, what happened with the building of the Ark of Noah? Yeah, yeah. Maybe someone... Also, we can't deny the usage of the of the Torah, of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, they're great sources to compare and contrast yep. to see. You know, what's Noah saying to his people before the flood? Mm -hmm. uh, what's Abraham's discussion with the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. You know, what's happening with the angels Harut Marut? Who's yeah. Enoch, or do we call him Idris? You know, so I think yeah. those are sources uh, as well that we can use. But ultimately. You look at uh, Hadith Thaqalayn, I'll leave behind for you two weighty things, the Qur'an and my Ahl al-Bayt, and the Qur'an ultimately is the best source. You know, well, you got the verses of the Qur'an, they're discussing these prophets. Some surahs are called, after, are named after prophets such as Nuh and Ibrahim. Others have the stories of the prophets at different places. Mm. That's ultimately your best sources which you can use. Ah, yeah. um, just a few questions coming in from uh, WhatsApp. Uh, this one here, no name. Salam alaikum, Sayyid Ammar. I am looking to overturn a conviction in the UK. I spent five years and ten months in jail and wish to be exonerated. What would be the best practice to get mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I became a Shia in 2016 after seeing the 12 Imams in a dream whilst in jail. God's door of forgiveness is open for everybody. Um, as long you know you, you ask the Lord for forgiveness, you've regretted what you've done, mm. you'll never do it again. God's door's open for you. Mm. Uh, another question here, saying, "Salam, Sayyid Ammar mentioned the prophets came for the, uh, for the jinn as well as human beings. Please ask him how was there no prophet sent down pr uh, to the jinn prior to Prophet Adam alayhi salam." Because history suggests that the jinn existed on the planet before human beings were sent down. Sure, we're going to be discussing that in the story of Adam السلام, tomorrow Inshallah. and his interaction with the one who is named Iblis mm -hmm. before he leaves the garden and who later is known as Shaytan. Mm. So we will discuss that inshallah tomorrow. Okay, now you know, you mentioned the different books uh, that mention the prophets of Allah, you know, such as Bukhari, Bihar al-Anwar, Nahj al um, You know, although all Muslims believe in prophets, what's the difference between Sunni and Shia? Um, the sources um, is the difference. Quran we both agree on. Yeah. After that, it's completely opposite. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking at the main sources of knowledge about the lives of prophets, of God, um, apart from the Quran, in the world of other schools in Islam, you know, they, they take the companions as being the main source of knowledge. Mm -hmm. For us, it's the Imams of Ahl al Bayt as the main source of knowledge after the Quran, mm -hmm. um, for them to tell us what the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family taught about those prophets that came uh, before him. So, while we have thousands of hadiths from Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq about Ayyub, about Nuh, about Musa, about Idris, about Isa, um, about the Al-Kifl, about al yasa about Samuel, about mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, all these prophets alayhi um, And they're the ones that we rely on. You know, with all due respect to other schools in Islam, I don't take their sources um, as a guide for my understanding of the seerah of the NBR. Mm. And one more question. Uh, there are plenty, plenty coming in, but one more question. Uh, from Noor from Canada. It says, Salam to both of you. Uh, I'd like to start off by sending my heartfelt salutations to uh, Dr. Sayyid Ammar. Thank Nashawani. you. Thank you, Noor. Thank you. An absolute legend. Uh, my question is who was made first? Uh, I have heard in Majalis that Imam Ali alayhi salam was the individual to make Nabi Adam alayhi salam. Is this true? Thank you. Uh, well, you know, there's no doubt that the two greatest creations of God um, 
are the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, and Imam Ali alayhi salam. Their light was created years before uh, Nabi Adam alayhi salam. And we'll see in tomorrow's show that when Nabi Adam alayhi salam talks to his Lord, there are certain names who he mentions in his dua, who we as Muslims all have to mention when asking for our supplications to be answered. Okay. Uh, also, we have, <laughs> there's a lot, there's a Hassan from Dearborn. He says, salams <coughs> to the studio. Hope everyone's fast is going well. I was wondering, Sayyid, could you please comment briefly on the status of the prophets and their ability to sin or disobey Allah? Are they infallible? What is the term that is used uh, if not infallible? Tune in every night <laughs> as we go through the lives of every prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially in answering the questions about their isma. Yeah. And looking at different terminologies such as tarq al-awla. You know, and what is the meaning of istighfar <laughs> and dhamb and, and so on. We'll, we'll look at all of these, um, you know, every night. But so far as for us to look at the Shi'i mm. important position, that is that the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are guides for mankind and they are all error-free individuals linking to Hassan's point actually um, you know talking about if a prophet wasn't infallible you know couldn't someone just randomly one day say look I'm gonna go in a cave I'm gonna sit there for I don't know a few hours come out tell the people I am a messenger of God I was sent by God firstly look at his uh, character before he went into the cave mm -hmm. yep um, if he's known as Sadiq and Amin, and not just the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, many prophets were known as Amin or known as Sadiq. Never told a lie. Always trustworthy with their intellect. There's two types of Aman. Mm -hmm. Amin, intellectual honesty, economic honesty. Okay. And they never ever withered on both. So number one, if somebody just comes out and tells you, listen, I'm a prophet, firstly, you know his past character. Secondly, you look at his behavior after that day. What is he espousing? I'm your prophet. Make sure you give me a million dollars every day and I'll guarantee you a place in Jannah. No, <laughs> I don't want anything. I'm even willing in some cases to live in the shi'ab of Abu Talib in poverty. Yeah. I'm willing to see my family drown while I beg them to come on the ark. I'm willing to sacrifice my son for my Lord. Mm. Number three, there is also miracles that some can perform. It's not just anyone. Number four, I believe people have a mystical consciousness. Why rationally can you deny that there isn't one figure on the earth who God has decided to give a level of mystical consciousness higher than others? Mm -hmm. Abdul Qudus of Ganjo was a mystic. Mm -hmm. And they asked him, what's the difference between you and Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family? He said, if I had gone on Mi'raj, I wouldn't have come back. Okay. I would have enjoyed where I was. Whereas Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family came back. The difference between a mystic and a prophet. Yep. A mystic enjoys that world of the realm of being in God's divine grace. A prophet mm -hmm. knows he has a mission on behalf of the Lord that he wants to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And so if I can see there are people in the world today in my own family who are very righteous, in the community who are righteous, in the ulama circles who are righteous, what's there to deny that God couldn't pick 124,000 to be the most righteous? Very true. Um, Sayyidina, we are being bombarded, alhamdulillah, with questions on WhatsApp. Um, so just uh, I'm just going to pick a few here. Uh, says, Salam alaikum, brothers. Salam alaikum, Dr. Sayyid Ammar. Was Prophet, Ad, uh, Prophet Abraham's father a monotheist? <coughs> Prophet Abraham prayed for his parents. My dear, my dear brethren, <laughs> I will answer all your questions every night. Yeah. But you're asking me about Nabi Ibrahim. Nabi Ibrahim is in a few nights' time. <laughs> Nabi Ibrahim's father was a monotheist. We should have left that for that. Episode. But we will discuss that in a few nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But because he was raised by his uncle. Mm -hmm. And we'll discuss the difference between Eb and Walid in that discussion. Okay. Okay, which is coming when Ibrahim refers to him as Abi mm -hmm. rather than to the Walid. And what's the difference between the two? But his uncle was a polytheist. 
Whereas Nabi Ibrahim and his father were monotheists. I assure you that you were a light in the dark and the light in the dark. You did not reject the Jews and the Jews. You did not reject the Jews. The Jews, we go back, these fathers, they are all monotheists on the path of God. Yeah, but I will discuss that insha'Allah in a few nights time. This question, Ramadan Kareem. My name is Teslim, I'm from Panama. Uh, where we have a majority Catholic population. My question is in regards to the mentioning of the firmament in the Bible. Is there any correlation in the Quran? It's coming insha'Allah. We're going to look at the firmament. We're going to look at the different aspects of it as well. And what's the relation to the Islamic discussion? Ahsantum Sayyidina. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I'm absolutely starving. Uh, same. Uh, but you know, it's, <laughs> For thought it's is great. In 10 minutes time. <laughs> we'll try and find a loophole to make it in one minute yeah. time. And inshallah, we will continue tomorrow with Nabi Adam yeah. alayhi salam. Inshallah, uh, join us tomorrow for an exciting new episode. Starting from Nabi Adam alayhi salam. As you know, this was only an introductory episode. But inshallah, we won't see a Liverpool shirt tomorrow. And uh, inshallah, stay tuned for Dua al Iftitah and Adhan al Dua al Iftitah. Dua al Iftitah. That's a legendary dua. Is that a new one? I love you. 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 Don't do that. No problem. Okay. And inshallah, join us tomorrow for the new episode on Prophet Adam alayhi salam as we dive into his life and the lessons we can take. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.